Hey everybody, it's Ron and Debbie. We're back for another edition of I'm Ron. Ask Ron. I'm Debbie. <laughs> we let Jenna have the day off. <laughs> okay, our first question is from Rolando Pastigo from California. Ron, I just listened to a report about Trump University and I'm very concerned about wholesaling going forward. I've wholesaled properties before by just having the property under contract and then selling my contract to the end buyer. It seems this technique could be illegal or may be illegal going forward because I am not a realtor. Mm -hmm. I know you've touched on this in the past, but given the high profile with Trump, this could end wholesaling as we know it. Really? How can we flip contracts without being a realtor? <laughs> Rolando, I am hoping that I live to the age to where I don't have to deal with the ignorance in the marketplace anymore. May I live so long. Now, I am not talking about your ignorance. But what I would suggest to you is you quit listening to people who have no clue what they're talking about, tell you how to run your business and what's legal or illegal. If there's something illegal about flipping houses in California, first of all, I don't know anything about it. Uh, second of all, there are a lot of folks, like thousands, like hundreds of thousands of them doing it. And uh, it's all crap. The fact that you hear about Trump University is because he's running for president. I wasn't on the inside of that, but uh, you know, honestly, what happened to him doesn't surprise me because I was here when all of the stuff they were doing and, and the things that they were doing incorrectly was taking place, and I knew it was only a matter of time that uh, that was going to come to an end. We spent a lot of years here making sure that we deliver the services that we sell. I wish I could say that was true for everyone else and that the services they sell were worth having. Now, again, I'm not on the inside of Trump University, but I can tell you one thing. I know Donald Trump well enough to know he had no clue what was going on on the insider. He certainly wouldn't lend his name to it. And that is all he did was lend his name to it for a, some kind of fee, I'm sure. But back to the point, if there's no state statute in California that says wholesaling a house is illegal, it is not illegal. Quit listening to people telling you all this crap. And I'm telling everybody watching this today, the first time somebody says, you can't do that here, or it's illegal, ask yourself first, who am I getting this information from? And it is very, very likely they're in one of two classes of people. Their, their, their first class is totally clueless. No idea what they're talking about. They're just listening to gossip and spreading it, which pretty much is what your whole news system is in this country. One station gets it from another and talking heads keep passing it on. Or number two, they're your competition. So, if I were you, I'd be very careful listening to your competition and let them tell you what you can or cannot do because the last thing they want to see you do is succeed. Anyway, don't listen to folks who have no idea what they're talking about. And that goes way beyond real estate. Uh, all throughout your life, always ask yourself, are they qualified to render that information and should I even give it any consideration? And even then, if you do, Verify it, because 95% of the time it is absolute crap. The whole world is full of crap. You can write that down, Rolando. <laughs> Actually, we just had a t-shirt made that says that, Ron. Good. We got a lot of t-shirts. <laughs> we do. Okay, next is from Jeremy Gui from South Carolina. Jeremy. Ron, I've recently discovered knowledge of the Dodd-Frank Act. This uh, seems to put a real kink in real estate investment oh when it comes to lease options. Here we go again. All right, things. stop. Stop. Jeremy, I frankly just answered that question. The Dodd-Frank Act does not even apply to lease options. Lease options have nothing to do with it. I probably know more about the Dodd-Frank Act than Dodd or Frank. I've explored it thoroughly. I've had several attorneys explore it. i got a legal opinion on it. Here's the reality. You're exempt, man. It only applies, one, if you're selling with owner financing, not lease options. And you have to sell more than three houses out of one entity in a period of a year for Dodd-Frank to even apply to you. And you're not going to do that. First of all, you're probably not even selling with owner financing to begin with. And if you are, you're buying houses in a land trust. There's only one house in that land trust. When that land trust signs a deed, that house is not in the land trust anymore. So that entity's dead. It would be very hard for you to sell them out of one entity unless you're taking title directly into an LLC. Now, I'm going to follow this up with a legal disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not sending you a bill. And my opinion is not a legal opinion, but it is certainly a learned one. Quit listening to people spread gossip. 
Okay. Next. And this question also was completely relevant to your lesson video that you just did too. So okay. he should definitely watch that. Oh, guys, while you're watching this, I just did a whole cool video on um, on IRAs and how to handle them and get your third party administrator out of your life. You probably ought to go watch it. It's right here in this week's uh, newsletter. Very important. Okay. I don't know of anybody else who can get that information. All right, next is from Joe Gilmack from Joe, Indiana. Joe, this better be an easy question. <laughs> Ron, I'm closing on a house next week and, and am simultaneously signing a lease option with my tenant buyers. Okay. They're bringing a substantial amount down and 13.5 within six months. Okay. Before, I would have used a promissory note to guarantee me collecting. However, I believe I've heard in one of your CDs you use another agreement that is much more effective in guaranteeing the remainder of the option amount being paid. Uh, Joe, you don't have to guarantee it. That's what your lease option agreement does. You don't need any further guarantees other than that. Your lease option agreement literally gives you the right to sue them if they don't pay if you want to, but you can, you're not going to do that on option fee. You do that if you don't collect the rent. But honestly, if they don't pay you the rest of the option fee, could it be a blessing to you, sir? Remember, if they don't pay the option fee, it does give you a right to remove them as long, as long as your rental agreement is tied to your option, as it should be if you follow my instructions and you use my agreement. Now, I am never going to evict somebody because they don't pay an option fee, so let's be real clear here. Number one, that's a case you might not win. Uh, if they're paying the rent and you try to sue them to get the rest of their option fee, you might not win it. But that same thing is going to hold true if you try to use a promissory note. So if you... If you collect enough money up front of them, they got skin in the game. They're going to give you the rest of the option fee. Because if they don't, they can't buy the house until they do. And if they don't, that means that they're breaking their own agreement with you, which gives you the right to go change it any time you want. So they're really cutting their own throat. I wouldn't worry about it, man. I wouldn't worry about it. All right, next from Oscar Freeman from Texas. Oscar. I just joined the Gold Club to get started. Welcome aboard, sir. <laughs> I'm not sure where to start or what I need to do to start getting trained. Could you okay. advise me on this process? Well, now, you know, Oscar, that's a loaded question because <laughs> that's all we do here is train folks. Uh, it really depends on where you're at in life and honestly, whether you can invest in getting to the highest level of training quickly. What you should do is get on the telephone with our office and have a discussion about all those options available and then decide where you want to go from there. And you can reach our staff at 800-567-6128. That's 800-567-6128. We have multiple levels for you to start and take you as high as you want to go, as fast as you want to get there. Okay. Next, uh, Ron, this is from Jim Burnsett from Georgia. And Jim. he's got two houses with numbers here that he would like your advice on. Okay. So the first house, the asking is $182,000. 182. The, the okay. ARV is 189 All right. Monthly payments are eighteen eighty. Okay. Um, the mortgage is one hundred fifty three thousand at eleven fifty monthly here. I know because he's got a second, so there's a second. Um, so there's payment. an LLC yeah. loan, um, a total of sixteen thousand, and that is seven hundred thirty a month. Okay. Total mortgage payoff is one sixty nine. So okay. what to do as to offering? All right. Well, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd offer him to take over his debt and pay his closing costs and get out of it because he's probably going to take it, sir, because of that high payment. And then you tell him you'll take over the payment. And then what I do is I try to go discount the second and pay it off because they're save $700 a month and totally changes the complexity of this deal. And even if they won't discount it, I probably would go put the house on the marketplace to see how much I could get down from my tenant buyer and hopefully at least enough to cover that second mortgage, pay it off anyway and save that $700 a month. And yeah, it kills you up front, but look what it does to your cash flow, and it makes the whole deal saleable because your cash flow is now going to be very positive. I don't know what you're going to rent that thing for. You didn't mention that, but I guess at least fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a month on a lease purchase. So now you got a five or six hundred dollar a month cash flow. Uh, I mean, if you can, I mean, if you can't pay the second off, you can't. But gosh, with that high of a payment, that must be a very short term second mortgage term on that thing. You didn't give me the details. Uh, or maybe you just take it over and rent it out and suffer negative cash flow because that second's paid down so fast. And then pretty soon it'll be paid off. I mean, at those numbers, that thing has got to be gone in, gosh, what, year, two years? Something like that. It's got to be paid off. So um, all of these options are available to you. But I would not give this guy $182,000 on a $189,000 house with, a, with that big of a payment on it. Wouldn't do it. And neither will anybody else. 
So I'm telling you, offering uh, what he owes, if the worst, maybe a little bit of money so he can move, and that's it, and sit on a while and see what's going to go, because no, no investor is going to buy out. There is currently a renter in there only paying $1,400 a month. Okay, well, that, that's a renter. That's not a lease option tenant buyer, but even that's a lot more than the $1,100 he would have on his first. Okay. Now, if that if that renter wanted to stay in there, could if he that, charge him more to make uh, up for he that? He could charge him more, and he could get a deposit from them if they have any money, but at the very least, he'd pass all the repairs onto them and give them an op option to buy for a while. Gotcha. But he'd be in a very pretty negative cash flow situation at that point. Okay. All right, the second house he's got is um, they are asking $35,000 cash. Okay. They Arf. are 200000 No way. Needs approximately $60,000 in repairs. No, no mortgage, way. clear title. No way. You should already have that a deed on that sucker. What are you asking us for? He you says don't he hopes to have contract. it in 90 days to close. I can. We'll be getting a standard sales agreement for 35000 with a 90 day to close. Well, who, who picked the 90 days? If you pick the 90 days, that's a no-no, man. That's an absolute no-no. A lot, a lot can happen in 90 days. Because I promise you, if somebody comes along and offers that seller $36,000, you are you're gone. You can forget that contract you had. You fight about that later. Uh, you better get that puppy closed as fast as you can possibly get it closed. I mean, go rob a convenience store or something. No, no, I didn't say that. That was a joke. <laughs> All right. You go get you retract that. somebody to get you the money. You get that thing closed because if your numbers are real and any investor finds out about it, I promise you, you're out of here, man, because they're going to go appeal to the greed of that seller and that, that contract don't mean spit to that seller. Get that puppy closed. He did ask if you would like to loan him the cash. No, I don't loan cash to my students. Every once in a while I partner with them. And I'm not saying that's not a possibility here, but that's not something I would normally do unless you're a PPG member. That's a Prosperity Partners Group member. Uh, I'll tell you what, it wouldn't hurt you to send me the information and make sure you send me the address so I can do my own confirmation on the ARB. And hey, miracles might happen, you never know. <laughs> well, city? good. I'm glad I asked because what? I already told him that you don't loan money to students. No, I do not loan money to students. What city is he in? He is from Georgia, Pembroke. Oh, look at that. Right up the street from me. All right. <laughs> okay. I'll, Clint. Take a look. I'll take a look at it. What the heck? All right. Okay. Um, this is from Clint Weir from Texas. When acquiring a property from the seller via a subject to deal and uh -huh. using a lease option as your exit strategy, right. if it's stated in the purchase and sale agreement that the amount that will be paid to the seller at closing will be equal to the balance of the mortgage at that time, how do you handle a situation where the seller asks what happens to the difference of the mortgage from the time the agreement is signed to the time it gets paid off? That's, that, that's, 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 not a, that's a moot question because... The agreement does not say, it, it simply says that you're going to take over the debt and it says approximate right out beside it, so that's already covered. Whatever the debt is, the day of closing is the purchase price of the property. You don't need any special language or anything. Okay. All right, Ron, that's it for this week. That's all? That's it. Okay. You guys know it's almost the end of August already? Hmm? So how many deals have you done this year? What are you waiting on? Let's get out of here. By the way, we're about to have our uh, alumni event here starting tomorrow here in Jacksonville. I'm taping this on a, what is the day? Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. <laughs> You're getting it on Friday. So by the time you get it, we'll have a bunch of alumni here in Jacksonville having a lot of fun. And we do this once a year for all of our Quick Start grads. And look, if you're watching this and you're not in yet, come on, let's get in, let's get involved. When, if, if not now, when? If it's about money, Get on the telephone. Call our office. Maybe we can figure out some way to finance you. Maybe you can just get the course and not can't afford the boot camp. Let's start somewhere. We can put you in mentoring now if you just get the uh, terms course and finance it for you. We have a help card where you literally can apply for a line of credit with zero down and and no zero interest for six months. So if you really want to do this business, at least let us go through all of your options. And I bet we can figure out a way to put you in the system somewhere. Watching these videos every week is good, but come on, it's not going to get you started. You've got to get going. And with the automation and the systemation, the systemization we had today, that has never been easier. Never been easier. Never been easier. When I tell you that I sit here and do three, four deals a month and don't work more than five or six hours a month, you can believe it. And if you don't believe it, come to my office sometime and we'll show you. I'll show you exactly what I do because it, it isn't much. I'm almost ashamed, almost, for, to get the checks that we get <laughs> on these houses. So anyway, let's get in.
Time's running out. The year's coming to a close. We're going to have a new president soon. Let's get started. Make sure that there's no recession in your house anymore.